Testing, testing. Gnomes is the best fantasy race, okay? Fair. They do have their own movie. Wait, actually, is there no two of them? I think now. The gnome uh oh, Mark. like Sherlock. Yep, Sherlock gnomes and Gnomeo and Juliet. Somebody tell me they've seen the gnome named Norm. Nope. It sounds familiar. Oh my oh. god, it's hysterical. It's right, a old movie. It's like an 80s movie. It's hysterical, though. Is it... What? Oh, there it is. 1990. Oh, it's in 90s? Huh. Anthony Michael Hall. Hall. I used to have it on VHS. <laughs> sure to the chat because we're seeing the way. You're so cutting for me. Is that only me? No, I no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just fine. <clears throat> is it better now? No, it's yeah. why in the fuck? Oh, you know what it is? Too many people on the internet. <laughs> I'm about to go kick someone off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's send out a memo. Here. Ask everybody on the internet to just chill the fuck out for a second. You know what I mean? Just log off. Give me a second. I'm gonna try. I miss the old uh, I miss the old dial-up days where you could only have one on at a time. <laughs> I don't miss the old dial-up days. Yeah, fuck you, Cisco, for <laughs> allowing the entire family to be able to get on the internet at the same time. I My favorite thing is when you connected to dial-up and somebody picked up the phone and it screeched in their ear. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you guys hear me? Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. I know for a fact this mic is not as good, but how bad is it? Not bad. No, you're fine. Not, not too bad. Okay. This is just on my phone. I'll just play on my phone with my gaming headset, so I don't have to worry about internet dipping in and out. I'll just use my data. Welcome well, to the Dolby Inn, the weekly one shot where homebrews are welcome and the players <laughs> like to stress out the DM. Let's see who we have tonight. A Gumbert. The most stressful. Lucas Cage. I, yeah, Lucas Cage, human, paladin, overpowered. <laughs> Lucas Cage Chris oh you're not playing Lincoln no I am playing oh you are sweet yeah all right uh race class I'm a Goliath rogue uh name's Neverwinter Jones and I'm basically exactly like you probably already think I am Lincoln. I'm Robin. I am playing Lincoln Heronius. I am a Hyrulean bard. I am mute, so I don't really talk much, but I can still express myself. Ripperx. I'm playing Nyx, uh, Undertable Rolnor. Undertable is her nickname because that's what she do to everyone who tried to drink her with her. She's a <laughs> monk drunken master. <laughs> Tim Aloha, I'm Tim and I'll be playing Petunia Martin gunslinger and murderess of extraordinaire <laughs> Boy, do I not know how to spell Petunia <laughs> It's spelled well, uh, A-L-A-V-A-R-I <laughs> <laughs> wow that looks like alivari uh, she's not here today she's sick yeah i know but <laughs> tim's character sounds exactly like her no no that was <laughs> never mind oh okay i was going for more scarlet o'hara but uh you know i guess we kind of both are um tim is scarlet Tim is playing a different character this week from last week because we encourage that sort of thing on this game, if you so desire. All right. I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> somebody's got to kick us off at the inn. Who wants to be there and what do you want to be doing? Jones I'm will be, uh, sitting at a table in the um, sort of eating area and, like, uh, combing through the notes in his... Uh, his journal. Okay. We're going to start with him. Everybody else is welcome to insert yourself into the story whenever you want. Um, 
you're in the, uh, did you say you're in the, uh, where are you sitting? In the corner. Of the lobby or the um, kitchen or dining? In the uh, dining room. Cool. So you are writing in your journal. Um, let's say the time is kind of mid to late afternoon. We'll say it's 3.30. The cleaners have already gone home for the most part. The guests will be arriving mm -hmm. soon. You drinking? Is there anything? anyone else in? Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely would be drinking a uh, probably a, a straight whiskey. Okay. No ice. Um, Chef Rupert is behind the behind. He's he's behind the bar in the kitchen, just working and cleaning some stuff up. Um, he knows that dinner is coming, so he's doing some prep work. And other than that, you are the only one in the dining room at the moment, unless one of the other players says otherwise. So, I guess roll me a perception. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's not very good. It's a two on the die, and I think I'm only a plus one on perception. I'll say yep, only plus one. So. <laughs> or I'll say uh, I'll say summer comes in, and I'm going to or feather. I mean, I don't know, I named her summer because I'm going to say feather comes in. And I have to roll a d4 for her because she is one of those elves that has moods based on the seasons. Don't we all? Yeah. So she is feeling it. She's pissed off. <laughs> so I kind of uh, tilt down my journal to watch her walk in and then um, just kind of keep an eye on her. She kind of shoots you um, an annoyed glance. Not at, not annoyed at you in particular, but she just looks annoyed. And she... Uh, I put oh. the notebook back up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, let me type this up real quick. It'll just take a sec. Actually, if everybody would just type in your character names in the chat real quick as we do this. So she she goes up to the bar and um, she says, Rupert. He says, what is it? We were just informed that we're going to have a very large group tonight. They decided they, di they, they didn't have the courtesy of making reservations. They just sh decided to show up and announce they'll be here within the hour. Well, I'm not ready for a large group. I need to make them a food. She says, I know. I'm not happy about it either. And then she looks at you and she says, I'm sorry, sir, but we may need these seats if you're not going to be eating dinner with us tonight. Oh, that's quite all right. I was almost done anyway. Uh, hey, Roop, do you need any help? No, it's okay, my friend. I can call in uh, Gumley to help me out. I, at least we pay him. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all could... right, well, the offer still stands. You guys are buddies, right? Yep. Okay. So as you're sitting there... Um, a couple people float in and um, they're just they're you were they're floating yeah they're uh, specters <laughs> <laughs> they float oh, shit. I know what those Rupert, are Rupert get I'm down <laughs> there's ghosts in here oh no those are two of our guests <laughs> <laughs> the specters float over to the bar and they order like ectoplasmic drinks or something whatever the hell specters drink I don't know one the moment and then um, one of them looks over you at to you and says, "You're writing in your book." So they're gonna stay specters. Yeah. <laughs> Just <to> jump in. <laughs> okay. oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, place the journal into my uh, my leather bag. All 
are you an author? Uh, no, I'm a professor. A professor of what do you study? <laughs> Artifacts and relics at the University of Waterdeep. We know a lot about artifacts. At this point, Lucas is going to walk in. Do I see these specters? Uh, sure, yeah. They're just trying to... Yeah, I'm going to like kind of turn around and go wait in the lobby. So the specters <laughs> But I'm in the building now. Just letting you know. That's racist. <laughs> you know a lot about uh, artifacts, huh? Like, what kind of artifacts are you talking Um, they say we used to be jewelers. Oh, okay, so you stick to kind of the gold and silver type and gems. <laughs> what the fuck? And then one of the specters says, <laughs> "Nancy, we need to go." <laughs> So they uh, they down their shots and then they start floating towards the lobby and then towards the staircase, and as they're going out, the uh, a gentleman comes through the door that does not look like he fits in town. You uh, you do not see people like him very often. He's wearing overalls <laughs> and a straw hat, and he's kind of he's got a front tooth missing because he's super stereotypical, and uh, he uh, he's kind of scruffy. Petunia's going to walk in right him. after him. Okay, you're following this man, and you can tell he smells weird, like, almost like <laughs> animals, I guess. Um, <laughs> and he walks towards the counter, so you see him, uh, you see him, uh, Lucas, and he approaches the counter and says to the GM, Hey, I got a question for you. Yes, what is it, my friend? Well, I just got into town. I was just wondering about getting some uh, some people for hire. Anybody fresh off the boat that, that could do a job out in the country looking for some extra cash? Well, hello there, sir. Um, I fucking lost my whole shit. <laughs> he turns around and sees you and says... <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you lose, miss? Ma'am? If only you knew. <laughs> About That's why, this time. Anywho, um, why I asked. I, I'm looking for some work. I'm looking for some work. You darn tootin'. Well, I don't know if this is much work for a lady. You, you ever, are you a bunch of... I'll, uh, pull one of my hand crossbows out and I'll twirl it around my finger and then put it back in its holster. Yeah. You know, you might just be the one I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> you said you uh, came what? in, Lincoln? Yeah, I was trying, <laughs> but I was going to wait to not interrupt. Um, uh, Lincoln's going to walk in the door with his rucksack and he's going to like hang up his saddle and things on a hook near the door and his, <clears throat> his uh, cloak. And he's going to bring a couple empty bottles up to the counter and wave to everyone sitting inside. Oh, you drank your milk already. Oh, my goodness. You go through those things quickly. And a feather comes behind the counter and sees the group of you standing in the lobby and kind of rolls her eyes and storms into the office. And he says, <laughs> uh, all right. But you best be quick. We're expecting a large group. They'll be needing the dining room soon. I walk out of the dining room at this point. And that's when Nyx enters the room. Okay. With a cart full of barrels <laughs> with a couple of squirrel on them. And she's arguing with one of the squirrel. <laughs> no! No, not. I'm not too drunk to make a delivery, okay? Not yet, <laughs> at least. <laughs> I love this so much. What the hell? Why are you mad? Ripwreck, you're always the one that makes me voice animals. <laughs> Just wait. 
Maybe it was so, last time. I don't remember. She's gonna walk uh, to uh, the counter of the dining room and uh, tap on the counter to attract the uh, cook attention. Uh, he's like, oh, hello, Rip. Or uh, <laughs> I almost said Rip Rex. The the drinking woman. Yeah, yeah. Delivery from my brewery this week. Oh, perfect. Much obliged. Your timing couldn't be better. Let's wheel those in here. See? I told you not. I'm not too drunk to make a delivery. <laughs> ha! What kind of brewery sells squirrels? <laughs> <laughs> the squirrel stays with me. It's the barrel <laughs> I sells. He catches a he catches a whiff of your breath from like th two feet away or three feet away, and he just kind of he kind of like visually gags. <laughs> we <We're, coughs> we're all those over here. <laughs> he starts lugging the barrels off and uh, hooking them up to the the spouts at the at the the bar area. Well, great. While I'm here, can you fill this up with meat and this one with whiskey? She pulls out her water skin and uh, an iron flask. But this is your meat and your whiskey, and you're going to take it back? <laughs> no, no, no. Not, not, not from my barrel. From, from the cheap one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. I guess it's a trade then. Starts filling up your barrel. I'll pay, of course, like usual. All right. Don't drink it all in one sitting. Maybe have a piece <sighs> of bread with it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese. No, not, not in one sitting. Come on. In one walk. <laughs> Well, now, you were saying that uh, you had some sort of a problem up in the country? Well, Now, I tell me about that. I don't know why you assume I'm from the country. Well, you said that it was in the country. Like, literally, you said that. I'm going to have to scroll backwards on the YouTube to find out if that's true. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, I got a problem, all right. I've been losing my farm. I'd be hand. interested in going out in the country. You don't even know what the job is, young man. <laughs> I have to look for the ancient ruins of a temple. Could oh, be out there. You don't say. Well, I haven't seen any temples out there, but what I have seen is a lot of dead farm hands. I'm up to my third right now. You know how hard it is for a farmer to get work once he gets a reputation for his farm hands to die? <laughs> Not easy. Well, n no, I can't imagine so. Well, at any rate, I tried to hire people, and let me get the map here real quick. <clears throat> I don't he's even just cringing. Remember what it's called? <laughs> hey, Brian. Yeah, what's up? Does he have shoes on? Yes or no? <laughs> he does, but they're <laughs> super worn, like in the old black and white cartoons, where it's just like up, and his toes are sticking out. Yeah, so like the big toe sticking out. Like okay. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Get in the picture here. <laughs> he says, I tried to hire some people up in Cardington, but they knew too well of my reputation with this farm, what's been going on, and they're all cowards anyway. I thought, hey, maybe down in the big city of Torrington, there'll be some brave folks off the boats looking for some extra cash. Uh... But do you need farmhands or people to find out why your farmhands dies? Well, I could get farmhands if I could just solve this gosh dang problem. If you, if you guys would be willing to sit the night, that's when I lose all my farmhands is at night. You see, they, they try and guard the sheep from the wolves and do some patrols now and then. And then I wake up the next morning and find them laying in the field. Kick the bucket. Whatever's doing this, I'd be much obliged if y'all could find it and put an end to it. 
Listen, sir, are you going to get a room or not? Mm, I don't think I'll need to now. So then the GM decides to go into the office and try and get uh, Summer or Feather to call to calm down. Well, how much do you pay? Hmm, I done pretty well at the harvest this year. I got a pretty penny. Would That's you... not a number. All right, <clears throat> haggling folks, I see. Would you do it for room and lodging, and then we'll say, well. I'd be willing to go up to 400 apiece just for uh, the completion of the job. Four hundred? I'll do it. Do you have alcohol? Oh, sure. We got yeah, some. Yeah, I'm in for that. We got some rye whiskey up there, but uh, you just wait. When the missus fixes you up some uh, a mighty fine meal, that'll be more than enough to to pay your way. You'll you won't believe the kind of food we eat out in the country. I'd believe it. I've eaten <laughs> some pretty strange things in my day. So uh, <clears throat> he says, "Well, I'm a little anxious." Um, is there any chance we could, uh, head out tonight so I don't have to spend the money on a room here? I'm yeah, free. My delivery's made. All right. No, not. I'm not needed at the brewery until, like, three days, I think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got employees to do that stuff. Come on. Well, yeah, let's uh, let's get going. And as soon as you guys say that, Gumley comes in and he says, All right, sir, I hitched your buggy up in the stable and your horse is put away. <laughs> he says, I'm going to need you to get that back out there, son. <laughs> We're about to head out. Gumley looks confused at first and then he says, Uh... All right. He goes back out to get the horse. You guys have experience <laughs> with this type of work, or? Lincoln just well, stands there looking like a dirty farmhand with cash it on his boots. <laughs> <laughs> you mean stalking the night, searching for someone or something, and beating it? Yeah, a lot. Well. I guess that's about all well, I can uh, ask for. My friend, uh, Lauren, told me to come here and find the folk of the Port Authority. And I think you found them. And I have like, too. shoves his badge in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Port Authority? Why, wow, that sounds mighty official. Y'all you, must be trained for this job. I didn't know I was hiring such professionals. Yeah. And you know what? When you hire professionals, you get the good job done, but it costs. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I understand. And, and if this ends up being much, much worse than we ever expected, I, I intend to compensate you. I got to listen. This is my business at stake. You got to make you got to spend money to make money. Yeah, I get that. That's what my grandpappy I, always taught me. I need to buy the ingredient to make, well, mead before I can make mead and sell it for money. So, yeah, basic. Listen, if you make any sort of wheat beer, I'd be happy to give you a few bushels if you could use it. Oh, I have the stuff for that. So, yeah, yeah, I'll start a batch. A short while later, Gumley comes in and he says, All right, she's back out. Uh, uh, Nix is going to turn to uh, the cook and say, A shooter for uh, Gumley. He deserves it. <laughs> Better Gumley. 
Anything, anytime. He says, oh, I didn't realize that. I'll take two shooters. <laughs> so you guys, uh, well, he says, well, are we ready to go then? Ready as I'll ever be. Lincoln nods and walks out the door. <laughs> and then you hear like a little tune outside and like clip clopping. I guess that young lad's got a, a transportation of his own. Uh, I'm up too, but uh, I only have my legs. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, good sir. You can ride in my hay cart. It's Miss. No worries, good ma'am. You can ride in my hay cart. <laughs> that on a shirt. <laughs> I, I take out my sable hat and put it on and then walk outside. Outside, there is a... Uh, when he's... So there's a ho a couple horses and a buggy with like a, a, a kind of... What do you call it? One of those bench seats. Um, buckboard? I learned, sure. I learned that from the, the Joker's Wild podcast. I've been listening to that one. <laughs> <laughs> He gets up on the buckboard, and behind him is a, uh, he was not kidding. It was a wagon with railings all around it and a giant pile of hay piled up in the middle of it. Nyx is going to lie down on the pile of hay. <laughs> okay, you are up pretty high. With if, you, if you are at the tip top, you're like, you know, 10 feet off the ground. Yeah, I ends climb up behind too and then put my hat over my eyes. Okay. Ends behind her back and uh, lying on her back, like relax. I'll sit next to the farmer and uh, chit chat with him the whole way. All right. Oh, and she's gonna open that uh, water skin of mead uh, she she brought just now. And uh, if uh, who, who if who who's next to her already? Uh, uh, never went I forgot. To oh, uh, she's gonna offer some to you. Uh, on the way have you uh, none right now maybe once we get a little bit closer um i'm sorry I, I was a little distracted with gming are you with us lucas cage yes okay. lucas gets on last i he's heavy as fuck so i guess it dips down a little bit okay <laughs> are you just like He'll get on there sitting on the running board or something yeah he just has his big fuck off sword on just like planted i kind of like dig it into the wagon because i don't care it's not my wagon and i just like <laughs> plant it in front of me uh, he's just sitting there in his fucking heavy ass armor so the wagon starts to pull out and uh lincoln is riding beside him and the, can so, i be uh, behind them yeah sure you can you can be behind him and then as the hay is starting to fall off the back of this cart, I guess your horse could munch on the <laughs> way and snack on the on the trip. No, I just, I wanted to be, like, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 feet behind so that I could kind of watch everybody's back, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this, this cart is not moving very quickly. You guys are plodding along at a leisurely pace, and he says... Uh, might be about midnight by the time we get there. I don't know. I don't know if you guys will want to bed down or if you'll uh, want to stay up for the night, but I hope... I can sleep now. Oh, it's not a bad idea, I reckon. I just hope the wife's got some vittles when we get home. She don't know if I was going to stay at the hotel or come home tonight. I'll uh, stay probably up give her for a call bed. then. <laughs> a what? <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could. I don't think she could hear me from here. So he's he starts heading north out of Torrington, and you guys are on the road to Coddington, and he says, well, my place isn't actually in Coddington. That's just the nearest town. I'm up north towards the, the, well, I don't know if you call that a panhandle or what, but I'm up there. I 
I think everybody is sleeping. He's just talking as you no. guys are snoozing. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's just droning on about the farm and country life and how things, t- times are a changing, and you guys are just like passed out on the hay and stuff. So, um, darkness falls, sun goes down, and, uh, you start to see the light, the fire lights of Coddington in the distance. And then he passes that, and his, the road goes from a, uh, a, a kind of well traveled dirt road to just kind of bumpy earthen, like there's rocks and it's kind of rough. And he goes into, um, there's a forest along the side, but mostly it's just open fields. And um, eventually you you crest a hill and you go down into this kind of valley area and you see a farmhouse, which I will post for you right now. I'm in the wrong folder here. You guys have learned that this guy's name is Tyrone McChicken. And, uh... McChicken? (laughs) All right. Wow. Can I do something with the stream real quick? Not to be confused with the old chickens. I'm about to put my dog outside if she doesn't be quiet. <laughs> you guys hear a distant dog barking on the farm as you approach. <laughs> on the main road going in, on the left side, you can see a great big uh, field full of hay that's ready to be harvested and then in the distance another field of hay and then um as you get closer and start rolling into the the kind of main um residential area of this farm you notice that it's odd that on the mcchicken farm you don't see a single chicken or hear anything (laughs) there's no coops there's no nothing (laughs) i can't (sighs) so he uh he pulls up and you see three houses and one is there's a big, uh, big kind of barn off to the side, and then the three houses. One looks like it's less decorative; it's more for farm hands. One might be for guests or storage or something. And then <laughs> there's one that clearly looks like this is the original farmhouse that was built here long ago, and that's where his family's staying. So he pulls up to that, and you guys are ready to to bail off and head inside or whatever he says. <laughs> what time is it? Off. <laughs> <laughs> bail. That's a good one. bail off. It's it's dark. He. You, you've you been asleep, but he says, well, I reckon it's reaching about midnight right now, but uh, I hope the wife left something because I'm getting hungry. But I would I would be grateful if y'all would try and keep it down a little bit when we go inside. I don't want to wake her up. All yeah, right. Be sure to keep it down. <laughs> I'll keep it down. Just start clanking my armor loud as fuck. Link shrugs. It may be These are some nice decorative plates you have. They belong in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> it may be stealthy in the big city, but out here in the country, you can hear everything for miles. There's crickets and there's like, it sound travels well. And he opens the door, kind of creaks it open and all the floors are wood. So if you have any sort of like metal boots, they'll be clunking and everything. And Okay, as soon as the heavy armored ones start moving uh nick turns to him and goes Shh. <laughs> he said to be quiet <laughs> lucas is like trying to halfway squat down and it's i mean it's still gonna be pretty loud but pretending to stealth we can roll for stealth just in case <laughs> he looks at lincoln and says I reckon you're the only one who knows how to shut up when it's time to shut up. And Lincoln, at that moment, you look over and you see like a whole row of clay pots on the mantelpiece. Oh, no. Shit. <laughs> I'm just letting you know those are there. I'm triggered. I need to make a roll for this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I 
I've been listening to other types of TTRPGs, and I thought we had a will save, but we don't. A uh, wisdom save would probably yeah, wisdom, be what yeah. you're looking for. Oh, okay. Roll a wisdom save. Oh, shit. Everybody? No, just her. Oh, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, Link will start breaking pots. <laughs> I would be protecting Oh my god, pots. I got a nat 20. All right, you look at these pots <laughs> and you cannot help but wonder what might be inside. But, uh, you know, he just complimented your ability to be stealthy. So you're going to try and maintain that and stay self-controlled. <laughs> that was so my brand new dime. So happy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you bought a good set. I'm excited. <sighs> He goes into the kitchen and pulls out of the ice box or whatever the hell technology they had back then. He pulls a kind of a roast and uh, some vegetables and things. And he says, "Are y'all hungry?" Or next, next is a bit hungry. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, I'll have something. Pull some plates out of the cabinet there, and there's some silverware in the drawer, and uh, I'll cut this roast right up. Oh, you don't serve your guest in your house. Interesting. Well, we're, we're pretty casual out here, and uh, the wife is asleep, and I honestly don't know how to serve a guest. Be <laughs> She's usually the one that takes care of that. Anyway. Here's what here's what I'll do. Look me in my eyes and tell me you're not going to serve me my food. I'm trying to persuade him or intimidate him. Which is, which is uh, oh, okay, let me look at this. Probably intimidate, because I'm telling him what to do. I'm trying to tell him what to do anyways. He rolled a uh, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> Did you catch that? No, what would you say? He rolled, a, he rolled a 13. He rolled a 13. My intimidation will be a 15 plus 6, 21. He kind of looks you in the eyes and then uh, he says, you know, mister, I reckon I need to learn sometime. And he goes and he gets you out of plate and some silverware. Don't forget the towels. Towels, of course. Everybody needs towels. Got to can't be wiping this on your sleeve. Y'all some, some fine, uh, some fine Port Authority city folk. Yeah, much I'll appreciated, partner. Too. Yeah, <laughs> Fine. <laughs> We're very fine. He just, he, he, uh, kind of uh, unsocially plops like a pile of towels on the kit on the table and sets a pile of plates and starts dishing them out. And then he cuts the roast and then he says, Oh, almost forgot you, my dear. And he pulls out a bottle of triple X whiskey and sets it on the counter. Oh, yeah. He gets you this, he gets you this dainty little shot, ga shot glass and slides it over. She's going to open the bottle, pull out her, her own whiskey flask, <laughs> down that, and fill that up with the uh, triple X whiskey. <laughs> he kind of stares just at you. Dump for, it on the floor. <laughs> he stares at you with uncertainty in his eyes, and then he just picks up the shot glass and says, and uh, me too, I suppose. He holds it out to you. Uh, I'm going to serve him a shot. Uh, I fill it to the brim. J just... Like it almost do, does a dome over it, but I don't spill a, a single uh, drop, and then I close it. He uh, he does spill a drop, and it kind of runs down, and then he slurps it down, and he says, "If any of y'all need that whiskey, yeah, I mean you may. I, I don't know what's out there. Um, do you reckon you'll want to spend the night, or are you gonna stay up all night and do this job?" Well, I slept on the way here, so I could do this tonight. All right. So. Well, I reckon you can see where my property line is. It's uh, all surrounded by trees. It's pretty much at the end of the wheat fields, and I don't know. I, let me look at the map one more time. It's about northwest is where I found most bodies. Um, northwest. Um, yeah, beyond beyond the beyond the wheat field, I don't know if it's wolves or what it is. Odd thing well, is, my my farm hands have gone missing, but all my animals, my sheep and my pigs and my cows and my 
dogs and my cats and my any lists everything except chickens have all been just fine. <laughs> what did the bodies look like when you found them? Oh, not pretty. Um, listen, I, I'm afraid I don't have any. Like, they had some fancy lawmen come out and do some doodles of the bodies, but I don't have the access to those. So the best I can do is tell you that I saw claw marks. I saw something maybe like bite marks. I don't know. It was, uh, it was not pretty. Definitely looked like some sort of beast. All right. Well, thank you for the meal. Um, as soon as we're done, we're going to investigate. I rightly appreciate it. And listen, I'm not much fighter like a fancy port authority, but I know a thing or two about throwing pitchforks and swinging sides. So if you need a hand, y'all wake me up. But uh, I'm a farmer. I gotta get some slumber. So y'all are free to roam around, I do what you gotta do. Think it will be quite fine. All right. I really, really hope I don't wake up in the morning and find five dead Port Authority men out there. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six dead Port Authority. <laughs> dead Port Authority. Dead Port Authority. Hooba dooba dooba doo. So he, he, he gets up and starts cleaning dishes, and um, you guys are free to, I mean, the night is yours. The farm is yours. What do you guys want to do? Well, I suppose we should go and see if we can find any tracks or anything like that. Yep. Um. Does anybody know where the no- Northwest is? Because <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, just follow us. Okay. You want me to roll a survival check, Brian? Well, he said it was beyond one of the wheat fields, so I guess you have a 50-50 chance. Maybe try to get above a 10. Uh, 16 plus 5 is a 21. <laughs> That'll do her. And so, yeah, we'll start heading uh, beyond there, and then I want to search for tracks. Can I keep that 21 for when I'm searching for tracks? Because that's actually what I wanted to do. Like, I figured we'd figure out which we failed. Okay. Um, So you guys want to do, like, just kind of like a perimeter scan or something? Because you don't see anything in the immediate farm vicinity except for just standard um, pets and farm animals, but... He said it was out. Yeah, we want to go, yeah, out beyond uh, the wheat fields and, you know, I'll start say searching yonder. around for <laughs> for signs of some sorts of predators or something. <laughs> Jones wants to look across the land to see that, like, all the sort of um, landscape is natural looking and um, see if, like, there might be any, like, uh, remnants of like old um, you know old tracks or like old roads or anything that might have been um, used by like an ancient civilization that has worn away or whatever as you scan the horizon you can see it's it's dark but it's a full moon tonight and so you can kind of see the way the the horizon um, contrasts against the sky and it's got some up and down, some hilly areas, but mostly this place is flat with some some forest around this place, and so it's kind of hard to make out. Um, you can see that obviously this place is pretty old. Some of these trees are pretty ancient; they're large, and um, you would estimate, you know, possibly even centuries old. So this is kind of an old territory that hasn't been um, traveled much or used much. So there's, you know, there's a chance. You never know. But you can't see anything off the at the very moment. All right. I just followed the rest of the group then. Okay. So you guys start making your way around the perimeter, and um, you're kind of following this line of trees. And for the most part, again, it's just you see some tracks of sheep. You see places where cows have been grazing. Um, and then you get kind of behind this wheat field, and you can already tell. Are any of you able to see in the dark? 
Yes, Ooh. Nyx is very good at seeing in the dark. With dark vision. Dark vision. Uh, Lincoln doesn't have dark vision, but he does have a torch. Torch. Yeah, Petunia is going to light up a torch too because she definitely doesn't have dark vision as a human. Yeah, yeah Lucas will stay next to Petunia. No, wait a minute. I'll stay next to Link. Then. You got a torch in Everwinter? Yep. So you guys have three torches and Mr. Dark Vision. Rip Rex, roll me a perception. All right. Eight. Um, you guys can see that there are some intentionally like these rows throughout the wheat fields for people, to, the farmers to walk and work. And um, they were kind of strategically planted that way. And you're trudging along. And uh, Nix is Nix is kind of maintaining her balance. OK, but she's her her line isn't super straight when she walks. <laughs> It's uh, it's okay. She's just nope. It's not straight at all, actually. Yeah, she's getting by, but she doesn't notice what I was wondering if she might notice. Um, and then as you guys are walking behind this thing, you hear a noise in the distance, and it sounds maybe like a howl. Just you, I don't know. Art, why don't you guys roll? I think nature checks for this one. By the way, 19 on my performance to appear drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't even notice that his line. You, he's maintaining oh, I got a 19. You said perception or? Mm, this one's nature. Nature. Ooh, I got a nine. One. We hope I'm good at that one. Falk, you said what? Uh, Not Falk. 19 Falk. again. <laughs> I got a seven. Nat 20. It was, on, it was on 17 and then rolled over to a three. Oh, no. Yeah. You hear these noises and everybody above a 15 knows that it's probably coyotes, not wolves. How far away are we talking? If we could guess. Off in the woods, probably. Um, you might estimate, you know three to six hundred yards out there okay so a little bit of ways all right no i doubt that's what causing this much destruction yeah there's nothing to worry about. are not very uh, aggressive towards humans this what? might be why there's no chickens around here you guys are at the back of this straw field which um petunia's confident that this is the northwest region of the farm. Why don't you guys roll me an investigation check? That is not one for me. <laughs> Ooh, I got a 20. Unnatural. Is that three? 12. <clears throat> So Neverwinter sees what it... Neverwinter! Neverwinter, you find a rock on the ground. And <laughs> it's... It's almost like... Um, what do you call... Like... What do you call when it's... Uh, oh, petrified? It's got kind of a shininess to it. And you start wondering if maybe... Maybe this is something ancient. And while you're doing that, Lincoln, you happen to notice that some of these um, there's like a there's like a path through this wheat field that doesn't look intentionally man-made. It looks like they planted it so that people could walk through, and then something busts through this one, this portion. 
so it's supposed to be kind of like a corn maze, but something screwed it up. <laughs> Not really mazy, but yeah, that's the idea. Okay. Um, I kind of, I'm going to tap Lucas on the shoulder since he's near me and point to the weird out of place, I don't know, walkway. Yeah, there's like, um, there's wheat stalks that have been broken and shoved to the side. And I'll look at it. I'm like, hey, guys, over here, there's uh, some weird stuff going on. And I'll direct the group and show them what Lincoln knows. Well, how do you guys think we should proceed? Um, Lincoln's going to hold his torch close to it and step, like, through it carefully. Okay. Nyx will follow. You guys enter into this maze, and... Lincoln, you see... Um, something catches your eye in the light, and it's a red against the, the the kind of brownish color of this wheat. And as you get closer, you notice that it looks like dried blood. Um, like, does it look really, really old, or like maybe it was recently dried up? It looks old. Um... Could I do a medicine check to find out how old? Okay. Not that I can tell anybody, but I want to know. <laughs> um, I got a 12, so... 16? You have been on a farm long enough to... You, you know what... You've seen dead animals, you've seen blood, you've seen age. So you know that this is probably a few days old. And um, as you kind of follow it down the stalk of wheat, you start to, you see some more on the ground. And then you, if you follow that trail, it leads to an opening where this whole, there's just a, um, a pile of, of wheat stalks that have been crushed. And it looks like something was laying there on the ground in the middle of this, this wheat. And there's more blood there and some torn cloth pieces. Okay, so before I venture farther into that, I will definitely um, tap the people next to me and point it out and uh, except for Nyx because I know she can see in the dark, I'm going to just kind of like run my um, torch close to it so it can be seen by anybody who doesn't have dark vision. Okay. And then... If anybody else follows me, I'll probably venture farther. Who is currently outside the wheat field right now? I'm still looking uh, at that petrified thing. Okay. That thing <laughs> you finding anything I'm out? I'm following. Cool about <laughs> Which way did he go, George? <laughs> um, I think this is some old dung. <laughs> <laughs> Never winter. Roll me a perception. Oh, that is a six. <laughs> you are so focused on this thing that you do not notice anything. Is there anyone else outside the corn stalks or wheat stalks? I was waiting at the entrance to be the last one in, so... How about you, Romy, a perception? All right. That is an 18. So, um... Neverwinter is staring at this thing, contemplating. He's kind of mumbling to himself, talking talking to himself, but he's talking to you. It's like kind of one of those awkward situations where you're not sure if you're supposed to respond or not as he's mumbling about this rock. And then suddenly you hear something crackle out in the in the wooded area behind you guys. So away from the wheat field. Mm-hmm. Opposite. I'll just look at him like, hey, 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 get over here. There's sound. Stop looking at your rock. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm coming. What are you hearing? I'll have the, the big old sword out. Like, I I don't know what it is, but sounds in the wood at night are never a good thing. I take out my can, hand crossbow. 
Yeah, I was going to say, can we hear Lucas outside of the corn, uh, the wheat field saying this? Yeah, he's not far from you. Okay, then I'm also going to brandish my sword in the other hand. And oh, yeah. Back. Nyx is going to take a swing of mead and uh, go back out. Quick point of order. Divine sense real quick. Okay. Um, Celestial Fiend or Undead within 60 feet. Do I get anything? No, you don't pick anything up. All right. I'll be looking around, shifty eyes side to side, just waiting for whatever that noise was. I think, uh, I think that Petunia is going to yell out, uh, stop in the name of the port authority. <laughs> As you were saying that, um, I always forget the name. Hold on, a minute. Lucas, you were hearing some more more sticks crack and some more um, branches kind of rustle and, and leaves and things. But as soon as Petunia yelled, "Stop!" in the name of the Port Authority, everything just went silent. I just feel like it complete. It worked. This is our ace in the hole, everybody. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Just a moment later, you hear a really loud snorting sound. Kind of a squealy snort. It's so you guys are if you guys are at the entrance to where this thing broke through whatever it was broke through the wheat field, the woods are about um, 30 feet from you on the other side. And that's where this noise is coming from somewhere in there. I'm definitely going to position myself near it to be like the front line in case something comes out of the woods. Okay. But like any ideas here, guys? Blink about- probably won't be too far from you, actually. Well, Nyx is going to take a look with dark vision and see if she can spot anything. Okay. So you guys are going to position yourself closer to the forest? Yep. Well, yeah, Petunia would feel extra at home, probably into the forest a little bit. All right. And this is not a dense forest. It's kind of, it's like um, you could, as you can see by the map, you could walk through it, but it's just so dark out. So um, who was looking with their night vision? Me. Okay. Nix, you, you start staring through these silhouettes of trees and things and peering into the forest, and you definitely see movement now. Now that this thing has everybody's attention and it looks from what you can tell um, off in the distance, it looks to be a figure about taller than a man, maybe the size of what we know to be a really large basketball player. He's probably seven to eight feet tall. You'd estimate. We're fighting Shaq. (laughs) I'm about seven feet tall. But it's it's really strange because it's kind of it looks like he would almost be crawling on all fours, except you can tell even from this distance that his front legs aren't on the ground. So it looks like there's something really weird about this thing. Oh, oh. Uh, you said we are snorting. Mm hmm. Oh, no. no, that that pig, pig like snorting like a squeal. That's a. That's a boar human thing. It's the full moon. <laughs> this thing starts oh, making you mean its like a werewolf, but a boar. Yeah. Is it part yeah. man? <clears throat> this thing starts making it its way closer. Like? This thing starts making its way closer to you guys, and um, Nix, you can tell that you guys just have a few moments before your your interaction with this thing. So what do you guys want to do? Hey, if you still have a mind in there, talk. I want to cast Hunter's Mark on it. Okay. You you guys can see it now. Um, those without dark vision can see a silhouette moving, and, and, and uh, Nyx, you're starting to make out more details of this thing as it comes closer. Um, I, I want, want to start, to... like, trying to flank... Like around, if I can see like the direction where it's kind of moving, I want to start like kind of moving around to where. So you're gonna. It starts. In- you're gonna be headed into the woods then. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. Would I have yeah. if they're yeah. casting yeah. Hunter's Mark? Can I hex uh, hex on it? Okay. And I'll um, move forward a little bit. I want to be near the front of the group, but I want to cast hex on that creature, whatever it is. Never, never winter. Uh, kind of how? What's the distance you want to try and maintain from this thing? Um, I want to keep about um thirty feet away from it. Okay. And I can move uh thirty feet, thirty feet per round, uh, per round. But I can also um, actually at this point I'll I'll be using my um bonus action dash. Okay. So I'll do sixty feet of movement, but I want to stay like thirty feet behind it or away from it. All right, and then tell me about this. Tell me about this hex real quick. Oh, hex is just um, pretty much I curse. It's kind of like Hunter's Mark. Um, I'm gonna mark it, and I'm gonna give him disadvantage on strength checks. Okay. So as long as I'm concentrated on that creature, I kind of like place an extra curse on him. And I'll do extra damage if I hit him in case we get combat. I just want to be ready. Cool. Lincoln, what did you say? Um, I just wanted to know how far uh, we are from it. At this point, you're going to estimate if you did you say you're at the forest edge? Um, I was in the front with Nyx close to the front of everybody else before everybody started moving. Mm hmm. So I don't know how far that puts me away from the thing that we can start to see. You would estimate this thing's probably 50 feet away right now. But it's, okay, um, it's making pretty good headway, so it's coming. You, whatever you guys want to do, you better do it quick. I want to... I want to toss my... Uh, um, oh, my God, the thing I'm holding. The torch uh, closer to it. And that way it frees up a hand and then move closer. That's it. I don't want to do anything else yet. Okay. Anybody else? I'm going to repeat my warning in Gnomish, just in case it just doesn't understand common. When you do that, Nyx, it stops for a second. And it starts making a, a slower beeline for you and it kind of looks m less ag almost like the stature with which it's watching walking is less aggressive and more curious and as it gets closer it's within 30 feet now and you can see all the details of this thing and it it's humanoid but the way that it's walking is stranger than anything you've ever seen it almost defies physics because this thing's tipped over to the side and it's got these skinny little arms that are dangling with these big claws. And its face is pretty grotesque. It's kind of like you, it's like a boar. It's got a snout, but then it's got these frog eyes. And I am going to post you a picture that I sketched of it. Oh, wow. It's a big boy. And it is it is exactly like this picture in that it is standing at this weird angle and somehow it's able to maintain its balance against all physics. Hey, I super 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 heavy. <laughs> I I keep speaking in gnomish. Well, hello there. How it, is it going? It just says, <laughs> and it starts going towards you, Nyx, and it's um, it's within um, its visibility range. It can see clearly that something's weird about you. You're speaking in a language that seems calming to it, but you don't look right. You look unfamiliar to this thing, and it seems a little confused. Are you lost? Um, I don't quite understand you. Uh, can you nod and shake your head? It starts sniffing the air, and then it kind of, it does, it gives a nod, and then it kind of waggles its head a little bit. 
All right. Affirmative is a nod. The waggle is a no. Got it? What are the rest of you doing right now? I'm pulling the string on my crossbow. On my hand crossbow. So there's like a little... Okay. You guys, as you're doing your preparations and there's just a little bit of noise from each of you, he starts looking around at the rest of you and he starts to get kind of skittish looking and fidgety. And um, it looks like you guys either better figure something out or else he's going to react. He's almost like Did a... Did I achieve uh, flanking with anybody? Like when I went around? You are probably off to the side of it by now. All right. Is there anybody off to the other side? Um, I don't think so. If Everybody... not, I'll, I'll keep on circling around. Everybody else was just kind of lingering at the forest edge. Did any Although, of you go uh... into the forest besides... I well, I, I split from the group a bit to, well, uh, you know, talk to the thing, but... So this forest from that, is my no. favorite terrain, so I would <laughs> definitely went so... the forest. Okay, so if you go from the, where he, we'll say he broke in at the very center of this northwest wheat field, if you go straight across right into the forest, that's kind of his line where he's at. Are any, so what sides are you on? I want to be on... Um... Based on the map. On our like right side, so more north. So yeah, more north and kind of circling around like that way. And then for you know this time, um, as I try to circle around even more to get uh, get flanking, I only use my normal movement this time, and then I use my bonus action to hide. Petunia, are you following him or going opposite side? Um, you can take care of uh, Lincoln and then deal with me. Okay. Where are you at, Lincoln? What you doing? Um, who is still close to me? Because everyone is moving uh, around, and it's hard for me to pay attention to who is where. I'm trying to lock I it down. I was staying with you. Okay. Yeah, I'm staying with uh, uh, Lincoln. I'm now. maybe 10 feet away on your left, trying to, you know, attract the attention of the creature to me so it forgets about you guys. Okay. Okay, I'm going to touch Lucas and give him... Um, heroism. So, a willing creature I touch is imbued with bravery, and until the spell ends, the creature is immune to being frightened and gains temporary hit points equal to my spellcasting ability modifier. And that happens at the start of each of, each of your turns. And I'll get more temp this, HP? Yeah. Oh, shit. With the uh, um, max... It doesn't uh... stack. It doesn't stack, like, at the beginning of your turn. If you lose it, you gain it back. Oh, you heal it back. Okay, how many is that? Um, it is... Five. Five, okay. Give us a five temp. You guys can, already, you guys can already see this, but I, I just want to... Six. six, okay. Mm -hmm. You guys can already see this, but I just want to point out for the stream... This Catawampus creature is a fey creature created by Eldritch Dream, which you can find at Eldritch Dream Games. You can find him on Twitter, at Eldritch Dream. And then we adapted it from his Pathfinder rules. Tim adapted it to um, to D&D. Uh, &D. So yeah, you can find all sorts of weird monsters from, from Sean in the chat, Eldritch Dream Games. All right, so I think I have everybody Sean positioned. Man. Tim, what, oh, what yeah, were also, you doing? Oh, yeah, also, when I hid, um, I put out my torch because it would be stupid to hide with a burning torch smart and... petunia what did you decide uh, so she's kind of circling like halfway around from where uh neverwinter went and she'll toss her torch maybe 15 feet in front of her and uh pull out both of her hand crossbows okay so are you lost big guy and it starts looking around it it's it saw you guys go into the wood and then it kind of loses sight of you and the torch goes out and it's getting kind of skittish and so um it starts to it starts to move a little bit closer towards nix hey i ask a question are you lost it starts to slowly shake its head and it's probably 
15 feet from you right now. What are you doing here? Uh, are you the thing that killed the, 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 the other people? It, it maybe gives a nod. It's a little hard to tell. And then it starts sniffing the air and then it looks over at um, Lincoln and Lucas. And it starts kind of starts kind of studying them and sniffing the air. I'll start uh, whistling an old gnome tune. As you do this, it looks back at you, and then it starts to kind of trot over to you, almost like a almost like a horse when it it is going towards its master or something. What the fuck? It's really weird watching this thing walk. It's like. It's, it's walking like a person bent over on all fours, but its front legs aren't touching the ground. This thing's so ugly, it's almost cute. <laughs> <laughs> like a pug. All right. <laughs> this, thing is, this thing is within, uh, it's adjacent to you. It's within melee contact with you. So, uh, do you live here? <laughs> It nods its head. Has it been a long time? It nods again. Did the farmer disturb you somehow? Nods again. Oh. It sniffs at you. You, you know? And it... It's, it catches a whiff of your <laughs> drunkenness, and then it backs away a couple feet. You know you shouldn't kill people, right? When you say that, it kind of... <laughs> and then it claws the ground with one of its back feet. And then... Um, you start to see a s really small stream of something misty coming out of its nostrils, like a steam, sort of. What the fuck? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what are you doing? <laughs> are you gonna attack me? It definitely reacted when you said that you shouldn't kill people. Well, especially when you're as smart as you are, you can always talk things through. It starts to look over and walk towards um, Lincoln and Lucas and still sniffing the air. Hey, you're talking to me. It gives you a, a, a second, like a side glance gesture, but then it continues to walk up to them and starts sniffing. Elders Blast. <laughs> that one guy is not getting close to me at all. Fuck that thing. There is an explosion of flame. Um, I'm just going to let you hit since he's adjacent and this thing was not expecting it. So just roll damage. All righty. I wanted to let him talk to it, but the minute that motherfucker moved toward me, I'm like, no, not going to happen. That is six points of force damage. Okay. All right. Everybody roll initiative. I'm for my life. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had a gun. 17. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, 19 plus... Uh, what is... Plus 2. So 21 for Neverwinter Jones. 10 for Nyx. Ow! <laughs> you were staring at a rock, and then you start snooping around. And <laughs> how did you get the best? Because <laughs> I went... I got hit. a 12. I was doing strategic stuff. <laughs> well, the only reason I didn't do anything is because anything I have would have agitated it while it was that close to Nyx, and I didn't want it to just bat swing Nyx into the forest. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Nyx is a lot tougher than she looks. She's also <sighs> a lot slower than she looks. It must be the drinks. <laughs> oh. No, she she she's faster than you think she is. 
Oh. You got a 21, Chris? Yep. Cool. All right. Bitch. Let me roll for this thing. God damn it, Tim. You could have uh, written it before me. That way we'd, we would have been in order. <laughs> Who deleted my post? <laughs> Tim, so you could post it. <laughs> I don't see a um I don't see an initiative on this thing. It's deck zero, does that mean it doesn't have one? Yeah, she just goes zero then. Cool. Probably. Yeah, in five, yeah. There is no such thing as a improved initiative in five E, so there's alert, though. Alert gives you plus five. Oh. Boom. Oh, right. That's one of the things I wanted to go for. Falk has alert. It's dope. I'm going to be right back in just a moment. I need to take a break real quick. All right. We'll just hit Falk's life alert button. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you should get one of those. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. The best thing is, like, it's always little old ladies that, like, fall down and then they're struggling to grasp at the button around their neck. And, like, yeah. my grandma used to make such hardcore fun of those commercials. Yeah. So she would call my mom in the middle of the night and my mom would be like, what? And she's like, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody laughs and then she's like for real though I probably only have minutes to live <laughs> no <laughs> no if something bad actually happened she was usually like way over the top freaking out <laughs> like she accidentally dumped an entire bottle of barbecue sauce in her brownie mix cause uh, my grandpa was <laughs> <laughs> a boy scout and she used to make brownies for them <laughs> Well, my mom comes over with extra brownie mix and chocolate syrup, and they were the best brownies I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Buckle up, kids. Here's the sweet batch. <laughs> <laughs> they were so good. No one still to this day, people are like, no, that didn't happen. Your grandma didn't put barbecue sauce in her brownies. No, it was, she did, and it was delicious. But she called my mom in tears. You hit this thing with an eldritch blast and it erupts Whoa. into flame. And this thing staggers back and immediately everybody jumps into action. And that action begins with Neverwinter. All right. And so uh, when I moved that other time, did that get me into flanking with... Um with uh tim's character with petunia i think you guys uh, you guys definitely had enough time to arrange yourselves okay cool so i will with my hand crossbow make an attack at advantage and are you be able to get my uh sneak attack bonus on it then are you still at your 30 feet uh yep and you are behind the creature or you're off to the side um depending on how it oriented with everybody else like either or as long as i was uh flanking with somebody else then i would have um you know just stuck with that okay so i'll say you guys are off to the side you and uh, petunia all right so that's a uh, 14 plus 5 so a 19 to hit that's a hit all right All right, so that's uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 with the um, regular damage and the sneak attack bonus. Okay. Is that the end of your turn? Are you going to move it all or do anything? Um, 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to, um, after that, um, I'm going to move um, kind of uh, just however much I need to move, uh, staying that same distance away from the, um, the creature, and then um, use my bonus action to uh, reload the thing and um, get in the flank position with one of the other players. Um, one of the other players being Petunia? Well, I already used flanking with him, and like I assume that there's other players that are like kind of more. Yeah, you've the got. Creature. And so now I'm. Yeah, you've got fucking Lucas right on him, like in front of this guy, and Nick. Yeah, and so I'll circle circle Lincoln. around the back to where I'm like completely behind him, where Lucas is completely in front of him. Then. Oh, okay. Sorry, so I just be... I just don't know a lot about flanking, so. So you'll be. Yeah, just as long as you Lucas. have one person on one side, one person on the other, then it grants you advantage and advantage I can use for sneak attack bonus. In that case, I see. So um, you were kind of behind it and Tim was off to the side and now you're kind of in line yeah. with the group yep. sandwiching this thing. Cool. Okay. So um, yeah, then I use my bonus action to reload the hand crossbow. So this arrow launches and it cuts through all the trees um, with expert aim. And it pierces awkwardly, like, kind of up into this thing's back since it's kind of standing at a 30-degree angle and it roars. And um, y'all are reacting pretty much at the same time. So what do you want to do, um, Lincoln? Okay. Um, I don't know a lot about 5E, so how many things can I do in a turn? You have an action, a move action, and a bonus action. Okay, so I can do something, I can move, and then I can bonus action. So. Yep. Um, yeah, you can move at any time you in can, your turn. Like, you do your action, bonus yeah. action, then move. Like, it doesn't matter. You can just... Yeah, there, um, there's no specific order. You can take order. 15 feet of movement, run in and attack to do that, and then you can do 15 feet to back up after you've attacked. So it can be split up however you want as well, which is kind of cool. I think, see... Me and Lucas are within like touching distance of each other. I'm gonna back up just a few feet. It's not. I'm not gonna move very far because I have my sword. It's pointless. Um, I'm gonna cast True Strike, and as a bonus action, I'm going to uh, inspire. Um, who else is standing next to me? Neverwinter. I'm um, behind the creature from where you are. You've got Lucas and you've got uh, Nix. And I'm 30 feet behind the creature, too. Oh, okay. Okay. That matters. Then I'm going to Bardic Inspiration Nyx. Uh, you get 1d8 that you can use to add to a d20 roll. All right. You only have that for 10 minutes. And that's it. Cool. Uh, Lucas. Yes. All right, so he's hexed already. So how far is this thing at me, um, or away from me? I'm assuming it's coming at me since I'm the last thing that hit it, <laughs> or the thing that it's focused on anyway. It's not the last thing that hit it. But... I'll say 10 feet. 10 feet, all right. So as it's coming at me, I'm going to uh, use uh, my channel Divinity to uh, use Conquering Presence. So I'm going to like buff up, and my eyes are going to glow with radiant energy. And it's going to be really scary. It needs to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. That is a dirty zero. <laughs> a damn a zero. Bad negative wisdom. All right. So this creature is now frightened of me specifically for one minute. And it can repeat its saving throw at the end of its turn. Um, so yeah, it is frightened of me, which if someone was to look up the status effect for frightened, that's pretty good for me. Um, so he can't attack you. He can't move towards you. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And then I think I have it. He has disadvantage on range attacks and I have advantage on attacks. You can double check, but it's something. Yeah. He can't move closer to me for sure. Okay, and I think that's right. Yes. Dis is that right, Tim? Do you remember? Yeah. He's at disadvantage if he attacks you, um, but he can't move any closer. And he can't move closer to me. Perfect. All right. So as I do that, and he kind of like, I guess, backs up and gets scared for a second. As a bonus action, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. 
it's going to be the hand, it's going to be a big fist with some brass knuckles or maybe iron knuckles because it's medieval or whatever. And I'm going to come down and just like punch him right over the top of the head as this big giant <laughs> spectral hand just knocks him in the side of the head. Just make him collapse on the ground. No I'm trying to <laughs> knock him off center because there's no way he should be standing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever, so that is whatever the hell off going. center is for this thing. Yeah, I know, right? Be this standing straight up. <laughs> awful creature. That would be a nineteen to hit with the spiritual weapon. That's a hit. That's a hit. All right, and then I'll do my D eight plus three. So that is nine points of force damage. I believe it is. Okay. I put some force damage as I kind of stand there, eyes glowing, big fist with brass knuckles above it, and I just kind of stand there and uh, hold my ground against this creature that is now frightened of me. That'll be it for me. So it sees you, and it gets pretty. It gets pretty. Uh, you already hit it with an eldritch blast, so it's it's really nervous about your powers. You seem kind of unfamiliar to it. Definitely worse than the farmhands ever were. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, this weird mystical fist come down and smashes it on the head and uh it's kind of weird it's almost like a bubble bobbles don't they they teeter but they don't fall down or whatever it kind of like <laughs> goes down a little bit and then pops it back up and does this warbly thing like there's something unnatural keeping this thing up um but it definitely Real quick, uh, weebles they weeble and they wobble but they, they, wobble, don't, but fall they don't fall down yeah. <laughs> uh he actually does take an extra three points in the chronic damage from the hex that i had on him as well how many? Three. Cool. All right. So that's just added on to the uh, hitting him with the spiritual weapon. But that's it. Yep. All right. What do you want to do, Petunia? Um, I am going to put away one of my hand crossbows and pull out my rapier. And uh, I want to try and run up this guy like a ramp. <laughs> and... I want to stab him and shoot him the whole way up. <laughs> so what do you want me to do? Acrobatics first? I think acrobatics would be, or, uh, mm, I've walked on people before when I was a kid. I know how hard it is to balance. Better do acrobatics. <laughs> All right. Um, that's going to be a uh, 16. Okay. Um, let me see here. He's a disadvantage for any strength-based checks as well. So if you're using athletics to contest it, he'd be a disadvantage. Okay. From the hex. All right, you definitely succeed. So uh, you're going up and doing what? Um, I'm going to stab down with my rapier and shoot him with my uh, hand crossbow at the same time. <laughs> Petunia is a gun um, fu character. So the first one is going to be a 13 with the rapier. Okay. <laughs> Does that hit? That's a, that's a match. Okay, so that hits. And then the... Hand crossbow is a, a 16, so plus 8. Yeah, that'll definitely hit then. And so for the rapier, it'll be 8 plus 5. So it'll be 13 because I have Hunter's Mark cast on it. So I get to add an extra D6 of damage, but that's the same piercing that would come from my, my rapier. Like it, uh, it doesn't count as like a special type of, you know, necrotic or something like that. So it would be still piercing. Mm. And then I got a 10 for the hand crossbow shot. Also piercing. And then I'm going to try and uh, basically keep my rapier in him to use as like a, a hold so I can ride this bucking bronco. 
So you go charging through the forest as this thing's completely zoned in on um, Lucas, and you you go thump, thump, thump right up its back legs, up onto its back, and then you do this kind of lunge into the air and come down with your sword, and it pierces right through this thing's uh, shoulder blades, and then uh, and then you shot it. Is that right? Yeah, with my hand crossbow. Okay, so he's got two piercings right through the back, and then um, let's see, what can you do? He has just a lot of flesh, so you're just going to have to try and hold on to these sinewy muscles, I suppose. <laughs> oh, I was hoping to keep my uh, rapier pierced in there so that oh, I could hang on to that. made yourself little handles. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, after that we have Nyx. What do you want to do? Well, I'm going to start by telling it. I told you, you were talking to me. And I'm going to attack it with uh, my fist. All right. Actually, before I do, is there a way to get into a flanking position with it? For me, um, you were not adjacent. You were just standing off the, from the people, so you should be able to get around him without taking a, a, a whatever attack of opportunity. Oh, I don't take those anymore. Oh, cool. I'm a drunken master. <laughs> by all means, <laughs> flank him. Oh, by the way, I'm spending a key point to have two extra attack as a bonus action. You also get a plus. Uh, Eight-sided die on a d20 roll. Yeah, but I can decide to use that after yeah. I roll the die, so I'm going to do that. I just didn't want you to forget. So the first attack is a crit. <laughs> So wing and a crit. So I rolled two times the damage dice, and I only add my stat once, right? It's the first time I roll a crit in uh, 5e, so I'm not sure how they work. I don't it know. It depends on how Brian wants to do it. So the way I usually do it is you just multiply your your whole thing by two. Yeah, I, I'm uncertain what's real rules versus what's house rules <laughs> these days. So real rules is that you just double the dice. Okay. And so you roll the you roll twice the amount of dice and then add your ability modifier to it. Oh, okay. So not double damage, but double roll. Yep. I'll, I might consider what we want to do for the future, but let's stick with the real rules for now. So double dice and not double stat. Correct. Well, that's a marvelous eight damage because I rolled a one and a two on the damage dice. <laughs> that's uh... eight damage. It's bludgeoning. Okay. So you flanked this thing and you were just uh, doing some of your standard martial arts, right? Yep. As always, it's really weird watching you do your martial arts because it sometimes it looks like you're about to fall over. Sometimes it looks like you're, you know, on the offensive and it's just a weird flurry of dancing and punching and spinning. And this thing is so try it's just trying to fight to get a uh, petunia off of its shoulders and then out of nowhere <laughs> it's coming in from behind. <laughs> and uh that sends this thing, all of these attacks pretty much hit it at once within just a few seconds of one another. It barely has even time to react. And then suddenly there's just a brief moment as you guys are reloading and re, you know, getting your composure, whatever you got to do for your next attack. This thing has a breath and it is super pissed off <laughs> and it roars and grunts when it's and it starts shaking and. Petunia, you start to feel weird 
weird movement underneath you. Not like it's you, it was shaking and that was pretty normal, but then suddenly it's like the flesh beneath your hands and legs starts to to pull and stretch and you start to feel almost like you're on an elevator, like you're raising taller into the air. And suddenly, before you know it, you've gone from seven to eight feet all the way up to now probably 16 feet into the air on this thing. It's just enormous. And it's there's there's steam just billowing from its nose. And uh, you can see its veins kind of starting to bulge and its sinewy muscles get even more sinewier. And um, it is both raging and enlarged. Well, I'm starting to regret my decision. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, can I keep going? Now, um, those do those count as just standard actions? What? Enlarging and raging. Tim? Oh, I think that uh, Nyx has more attacks. Yeah, that, that that's the thing. The rest of her turn. My bad. I still have three attacks to make. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I use the key point to get two more. I have two base, but I have I use the key point to get like more because why not? You all see this weird ghostly image of the future of what's gonna happen with this thing, but before that Nick gets two more attacks. <laughs> three. Three more, more attacks. attacks. Okay. <laughs> So 13 match, right? Yes, sir. Second attack is 10 damage. All right. I'm going to use the D8 on the third attack. And it's still going to miss. Oh, no, no, I wrote plus five instead of plus eight, so I didn't need the D8 and it wasn't it. Sorry. But I'll still say I used it, so All right. I'll roll damage. Another 10 damage. And last attack. Twenty-six, I think that's gonna hit. For eight damage this time. All right. Do you have any more? No, uh, I think uh, 36 damage is enough for it. <laughs> you sure? You want to have another drink and think about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a glue, but uh, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so in comes this flurry of punches, and as you're, we'll say as you're, as you're punching it, it starts to grow and grow like the Hulk, and it gets enormous until it's about, well, I say it's 16 feet tall. It's realistically about 16 feet long. It's not necessarily 16 feet off the ground. And um, da, 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 da. just a moment. So it, ha it cannot go towards Lucas because it's afraid of him. Yeah. I think it's going to... No, it could, it could still make attacks if it's in range, but it's at disadvantage, but he cannot get closer. So if I'm out of his melee range, that's kind of it. I think his, he's he's just a monster, so I think his, most, his focus is going to be on Petunia with these two things digging into his shoulder blades. So he's going to try to make a swipe attack with his skinny little arms and his big old claws. So, melee attack...
All right, so he swings. I'm assuming a, a dirty 20 hits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and... One... Okay, that's going to be 13 damage. Okay, shit. It's going to take one swipe at you, and then it's going to focus its attention on uh, Lincoln and take a swipe at you. The same thing with his other claw. I remember Lincoln was behind me. Oh, I thought she was beside you. Okay. Mm -hmm. She said she backed up a couple of feet. Um, yeah. Well, there is a uh, 10 foot of reach for this creature. That's good to know. If she's behind him, that doesn't count as disadvantage, right? I think it's only against me specifically. Cool. Okay. So no. he's going to take a wild, long clawed swipe at her. Him. <laughs> Link. <laughs> yeah, don't attack me. That's going to be 13 for you. Or oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even check for that. So that I rolled a 7 plus. Does a 16 hit? Yes. All right. 13 damage. I dodge out of the way. <laughs> and then there's this last action. It's going to try and bite. Uh, 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 it's going to try and bite Lucas with disadvantage. <laughs> that one, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be a total of 10. Does that hit? Uh, no, it will not. All right. He goes to bite you, and you easily dodge out of the way, but he took a swipe at these other two players. And then... He's going to, um, man, I really don't want to try and break away from the stupid drunken boxer. What? I can only do four attack per turn, five time per, <laughs> wait, is it short or long rest? I don't remember. <laughs> now here's a weird question. If you tried to move with the creature and Petunia is on top of it, do you get attack of opportunity for trying to move away? <laughs> I actually don't see why not. Um, but I'm going to have it hold its position. So next up, we're going to go all the way back to um, Neverwinter. What you been doing back there? All right. So I have um, basically last uh, last turn, I reloaded the, the crossbow as my bonus action at the end of the turn. So I am going to um, reshoot said crossbow and uh since i'm flanking with the others i will be doing so at advantage which is good because that first roll was a one but the second one was a four <laughs> so uh twang and then the thing just goes wide and um so at that i am going to um use my bonus action to hide and stay in my position okay Oh, that's broken. Key restore on a short rest. So, yeah. Yeah, I can do that a lot. <laughs> what do you want to do, Lincoln? You just got swiped by this thing's claws. I'm pissed. I'm a swing at it. Okay. Now, uh, it had a 10-foot reach. Do you want to get adjacent? Um... Yeah, I guess. All right. If, <laughs> I'm just trying to picture this bizarre shit in my head. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So last turn, I cast True Strike. So that gives me advantage on this turn. 
Cool. Oh, it's a shit roll. So, hey! All right, so that is, and I'm using my sword. So, plus five. Math, math, math. How do I do it? 23. 23 to hit? Yes. Nice. What's the damage? Um... Eight. Eight damage. That was a swing of the sword? Yeah. There is clearly a, a claw mark or two of blood across your, your front end, and so you, you, you lunge in and take a swipe at this thing as it's distracted and take a healthy piece out of its arm. Is it, are you going to do anything else with your turn? Oh, son of a bitch. I have a reaction, and I didn't know that. <laughs> well, he'll be happy to hit you again if you want to use it. too fucking late now. <laughs> uh, yeah, shield is the best spell. No, I have cutting words. I oh, right, you're bard. bardic. Yeah, I can expend use of bardic inspiration to subtract 1d8 from the attack. I'm sad. All right, it's okay. It's fine. It's not that big a deal. I'll soak it. <laughs> um, I will then retreat back. And that will be an attack of opportunity. Oh. It's up to you. I guess I'll just stand there. Okay. Tap my foot and wait. <laughs> so, Lucas, <laughs> it has been uh, one Full round. Are we basing this minute? Oh, it's it's six seconds per turn, right? So yeah. So it, uh, oh yeah, you got to make the save at the end of your turn. My bad. You can go ahead and roll that wisdom save to not be frightened. My bad. I forgot to remind you. Well, I should remember that. And I'm pretty sure that's a fifteen. You should check the conditions of rage. Minus two. Thirteen. Because you might get advantage. Conditions of rage says you have to read the rules. It's not in the. Thing that I printed out for you. Okay. One sec. But you said 15 minus 2. That would fail. Damn it. So you'd still be frightened. But I don't know what rage would give you. Well, it Might give you clearly nothing. cancels out your curse uh, malice to safe throws because it gives advantage to... Yeah, so your strength shows are now just, are just even throws or saves again, or ability checks, but yeah. Okay. So, all right, so you're still frightened, then. And it's up to me. Plus one morale bonus on Will saves. Wait, what's that from? <laughs> That's from Rage. Okay, well, yeah, you would get, um, that would put you at 14, so you would save. You would not, no longer be frightened. Nice. Oh, shit. All righty. So, no longer frightened, so I'm just going to go at you. I'm going to pull out the uh, big anime sword. I'm going to make two strikes. Let's go ahead and roll those both at the same time. Um, one is a 25, and the other is a plus a 15. So those both hit? Yep. Okay. And we're going to, for the first one, when I swing down with the, uh, with the great sword, I'm going to add Divine Smite on that. So I'm going to add an extra 2d8. Let me go ahead and roll the normal damage. It'd be 3d6. Two of them are from the sword. One is from the hex. So I get to reroll that one because I'm a great weapon master. I get to reroll that one because I'm a great weapon master. And still two. So the first attack is uh, 11 points uh, plus 4 for the strength. So 15 points of damage. And I'll roll my 2d8s. Where's my d8s at? Plus another 12. So what is that, 27 points of damage on the first hit? What was the very first damage you said? Oh, it's 27 points of total damage for the first attack. Okay. I already took away yeah. whatever you said first, so I need a difference. Oh, between. Uh, I said 15 plus 12. Oh, 12 okay. was the Divine Smite, so that might be what the difference is. 12, gotcha. And then the next attack will just be a normal attack with the Great Sword. Uh, let's see. So that is a 13 plus 4. So 17 points of uh, damage on the second attack. 
as I'm just okay. carving into this big boy above me. Correct. Five points. All right. So you do all kinds of crazy shit to this thing that I can't even keep track of because people are texting me. And then we move on to Petunia. Yep. <laughs> I don't see why not. That seems fair and reasonable. <laughs> Give me just a second, my uh, laptop's acting funny. Minus two more. Okay. Um. Do you remember what the total was? It was a 10 and a, no, it was a 12 and a. It was 12 and 11. 11. So, uh, 23. When you cut something in half, do you round up or down? Down. Unless it's precise, it's always down. I see. All right. I lost my Discord there on the other computer for a second, but we're back in action. So uh, do you want to do anything else, Petunia, or is that it? Just keep riding this fucking Bronco. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, once again... <laughs> Two more piercings into this thing and it roars and it shakes, but it's so distracted that it, it doesn't really have a moment to try and actually get you off. And so, <laughs> sorry, anyone does. All right, next up is <laughs> Nyx. God damn it. Drunken, drunken, drunken boxer, what do you want to do? Well, this thing is still standing, so box it some more. It's not looking good, if that's any encouragement. Y'all have too many attacks. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it should so back to So I'm going to spend another key point to do two more attack this turn as a bonus action. It also makes me uh, able to move uh, to get the advantage of disengage for the turn. So I don't provoke a deck of opportunity while I move. So I get in flanking position and attack. Roll away. Uh, 
Okay, uh, 24. That it's, I presume? Mm-hmm. And uh, for 11 damage. Second attack is uh, 19 for 10 damage. Third attack is 24 for 9 damage. And the last one is a uh, miss. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> So, yep, that, that was my turn. All right. Hey, Sean, are you able to talk? Oh, there he is. It's listed in the Pathfinder rules as a humanoid body, but I don't know if it classifies it officially as. Yeah, it's just for the basis, for the purpose of a spell. Okay. Um. Because sometimes giants are considered, or giants are considered humanoid. Okay. It's not their size; it's the arms, the legs. It has a humanish body. In terms, in terms of type, he says it is fey. Yeah, I just need to know if it's a humanoid creature. What's well, the spell? Hold person. Can you hold a large person? No, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh, isn't hold monster like the more powerful version of that? Yeah, old monster would work. It works on any type of creature, but uh, old person only work on humanoids. And uh, like now sunscreen. I think they ch no, no. I think they switch. Uh, I, I think they switched uh, giant to be humanoid subtype giant. That's why it works on them now. I got gotcha. you. Cool. Just wondering. All right, um, Petunia. You you slash into this thing and then you're holding on. Let's see. Did we do Nyx? Oh yeah, that's your. Did you you already did all your punches? So next up is the monster. So you do your whirling and twirling and smash into this thing and then the monster grunts and squeals again and goes after. This time it looks at uh, <laughs> it looks at Lucas with a rage in its weird froggy eyes, and it's no longer afraid of you and more steam billows from its snout and it does a claw attack. I say me and my spectral hand will do the come on motion. Here we go. That's going to be a 28 hit. So. Yep, that'll hit. So question, just yes. for this damage, mm -hmm. are any of its attacks considered magical, or are they just... This is considered a slashing damage attack, just melee. Like, does it just do normal piercing, slashing, or whatever, or is it with considered magical with its claws? Um, standard. Standard? See, okay. I don't see anything about its being magic attacks. What's it do? What's it do? That first attack is going to be uh, 12 damage. Okay, that'll be a minus three because I am a heavy armor master. All so right. I got the heavy armor on. It does minus three damage. So nine damage. I'm going to put that down. He's going to take a s slash with his uh, other claw at Robin. And she joined the fray. Oh, I forgot to. Thirteen plus nine. I assume that hits. Ah. Uh. <laughs> 12, uh, 12 damage on that one. 
I'm going to expend a bardic inspiration to react with cutting words. And it subtracts 1d8 from the attack ability or damage roll made by a creature within 60 feet. I wanted to specifically attack you so you could get your reaction in. <laughs> Wasn't that kind of me? I got seven. All right. And last of all, it's going to try to... Uh... Gonna try to bite Lucas again. That's a nineteen. Uh, yeah, nineteen does it. <laughs> I'm such a moron. <laughs> I forgot to add in his uh, his enraged. I was enraged. It was large. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. We'll do it this time. Oops, that's a one d eight. That's a terrible roll. Nine. Eleven damage. All right, eleven reduced to eight. I will take that. I want to look off into the woods, and I don't know if I see him, but I'm curious how this Goliath is kind of sitting in the back, not taking any damage at all. We're over here getting destroyed, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, so the monster takes a slash at you, and then he takes his other hand, and he comes down on Robin, who does some sort of shieldy move, and then um, he tries to chomp you, gets a healthy piece, but not as good as he wanted. That takes us back to the giant in the back, Neverwinter Jones. What's your move? All right. So... Um... I'm going to put away the hand crossbow and then grab out my whip. And I'm going to um, use my 30 feet of movement, or not my full 30 feet. I'm going to go up 20 feet because it still hasn't moved, has it? Nope. From its original spot. It's just okay. slashing and whacking and biting. All right. So uh, I'm Slash behind it and, and I'm going to run up 20 feet and uh, my whip has reach. And so uh, from 10 feet away from it, I am going to strike at it with my whip. And uh, where did my <laughs> sheet go here? Here we go. Sean gets me. And so, oh, okay. So 19 yeah. to hit. And... That is six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage with the whip. Ten damage. Yep. Whoosh. And um, yeah, I say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Head him on, move him out. <laughs> Raw hide. <laughs> this oh thing, God. this thing cuts and tears right through the flesh of his skinny little arm and part of his torso, and he starts to leak blood. He's already got a couple a few streams of blood pouring from the, his back and over his shoulders. And then he's got some from the front where they were attacked. And then he's got bruises and s scars on the backs of his legs already from the, from the drunken master. Um, it's up to you, Robin. Let's, up to me. Let's see what you can do to this thing. I fall on my face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, Lucas, uh, Robin is now prone. <laughs> 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 gotta pick her up uh, everything I have because I'm a bard is like a buff or a debuff to the enemy so I'm just going to um you see Lincoln put his hands on either side of his face and he sticks out his tongue and kind of goes blah, 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 <laughs> and casts vicious mockery. This monster is super insulted. <laughs> I can't even roll my dice. I just, 
I actually did that. Like, you can see me on camera and you can't. I don't have one. Uh, oh, God. Okay. So, the spell's damage increases by 1d4 when you reach 5th level, so I roll 2d4. I have 4 and 2. So, 6 damage. All right. And... Oh, it, you get a saving throw, or you take that six damage. And wisdom? you must succeed a wisdom save, yeah. Sorry, I skipped that part. <laughs> it's all good. He's terrible at wisdom. And yet, that's a pretty good roll. He got a 17. No. He succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> My DC's 14. He rolls. Why is that thing so wise? <laughs> he rolls his froggy eyes at you like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> See if you can finish him off, uh, Lucas. So, quick question. Do I get plus six um, for the heroic thing that you gave me? Do I get a heal six up or something? It lasts for... Oh, did you maintain concentration when he hit you? That, that's the important part. Yeah, that's true. Did you get concentration? I actually had to roll concentration for my hex. Now that you reminded me. Yeah. Um, it's Those are important. Nope. Lost my hex. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. It's not. It's not been on one minute. It's yeah. been like eighteen seconds. D and D battle time is so weird. Yep. Yeah. So no, I still have it, so I'll give myself six HP. But uh, no, it depends. She has a I concentration didn't... check to make. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't make a concentration check when he hit me. Uh well you can do it now, right? Yeah, you'll need to do it a couple of them. Okay. How many times did you get hit? I I hit her twice. So you need to roll two. All right, I got a 19 and a 16. Should I don't know how concentration that's, works. Uh, hold on, that's... What do you add to that? Your uh, proficiency and uh, your uh, casting stat, if I remember right. Yeah, that should be good, because you have to make either 10 or half of the damage, whatever is higher. And I don't think any of the damage was over 20, so if you went over 10, you should save both of those. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, My well, I'll proficiency Aldi. bonus is 3, and mm -hmm. I got a 19 and a 16. Yeah, yeah, you should be good. You only have to make a 10. Okay. All right. So then, yeah, well, you still have it. Cool, so I gave myself that health. I am going to... No longer with the hex. I'm just going to go at this thing and go underneath it. I'm just going to try to, like, take the blade oh, and run across its body. It's a constitution saving throw, actually. Con? Yeah. Are you negative to con? No, it's plus two. Oh, yeah, then you're fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to take these uh, two swipes. I'm going to go under it, like, where its weird legs are bending. I'm just trying to cut its stomach all the way open. I'm just trying to finish yes. this thing off. Guts. Yes. So actually, when first I want to punch it just to see if I can kill it with a punch. <laughs> actually, I'm just gonna do the um, like with the eye poke or whatever, just to see if that happens. Because if I kill it with an eye poke, that'd be amazing. Alrighty, well, give it a go. Uh, that's a dirty twenty to hit. That's a that's a dirty hit. Yep, and five points of force damage to its eyeball. <laughs> I guess <laughs> that's a dirty move. Oh no. A five plus three, so eight points of damage to its uh, eyeball. It makes one of those cartoon sounds like the Three Stooges. Poink! <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll go up underneath it and just slash it at its stomach, making two hits with the great sword. Uh, let's see, one is like a 22, and the other one is a 12. So one will hit, one will miss. Um, for the one that hits, I'm going to go ahead and use my divine smite with my second level. So I get a 3d8 divine or radiant damage to it. 
Damn. Well, let me go ahead and roll this. I'm just trying to kill this thing. Let me roll this damage again. What I get. So seven plus four. So eleven piercing. And then I'm gonna add the three D eight radiant. Well you go ahead and put down eleven piercing. Eleven piercing. Right. It's gonna actually be uh five. No, six. Yeah. Five. Round it down. So five. And then it'll be 14 points of radiant damage as I uh, imbue my strike with uh, radiant energy. All right, my dude. Would you like to describe the death of this monstrosity? Well, if we're going to have fun, I want to cut into its stomach and maybe this thing finally gets off of, you know, actually finally weebles and wobbles and falls down. And uh, I want Petunia to see if she falls off, but I'm going to just like cut through its stomach all the way, like down its body and then like roll out of the way. Uh, roll a deck save to get out of the way of the guts. All right. <laughs> and then I'll just stand there and take it. Petunia, no, roll still... a deck save to uh, land on your feet without injury. Well, that's a seven Could for my deck save. Yes, sir. Um, so that's a natural 19. Y yeah, that's a, that's a lot. Okay. Um, what did you get, uh, Lucas? A seven. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is surprisingly, it, its innards are surprisingly heavy. And as you start to slash through its guts, you start to roll out of the way and they come just pouring down on you and, um, you're covered in this weird sloppy noodly mess. However, as this thing's kind of rolling over to the side and crashing to the ground, in the midst of that, what do you want to do, Petunia? How do you get off? What's your dismount? Oh, um, I'm going to wait for this thing to come fully to the ground and then just uh, kind of leap off and do the do like a little roll at the end and then come up uh, at my feet and put my weapons away and kind of brush my coat off <laughs> so this you guys you guys left the farmhouse walked halfway around the property found this monster took him down in like <laughs> under a minute <laughs> and this farmer probably hasn't even made it to bed yet what do you guys want to do well i walk up to the to the carcass and um see the guts everywhere and I say, uh, and I thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's job done. Ugh. Sure is. Well, that sure anyone, is. Anyone want to celebrate with a drink? Because I got some. Is anybody standing next to this thing right now in front of it? Well, I am. So do uh, snakes. Uh, roll a deck save real quick. Oh, no. Shit. Oh, good. 16. Oh, so 16 and plus... Um, that's, plus that'll, two. That'll do it. That'll oh, wait. Fun. My save is plus five. Oh, so yeah. that'd be a, a 21. This thing I is... I got a 16. <laughs> this thing... This thing's already dead, but it goes into one of those weird muscle spasms, spasms and its razor sharp claws come buzzing by you, but you guys step out of the way and uh, it gives one last kind of burp and gurgle from the inside and then remains motionless. So when the claws just barely missed me, I then turn over towards Nick's and I'm like, yeah, I, I think I'll take a pull off of that with, um, drink if you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey or mead? Uh, I'll take the whiskey. And I give him... Uh, I, I open the flask, take a swing, and pass it on. Yeah, uh, I pass who, it on to the next person. Who are the I three that are the most them. hurt? I don't know. I, 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 I'm I honored because the thing didn't want to try to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one that took a bunch of damage, am I? I know that I can heal uh, myself. I could deal with a little bit of healing. Yep. And oh, um, okay. I think it was just you and Petunia and Lucas. Okay. Um, I will cast a healing word at 
third level and heal all three of us for seven. Well, I'm much obliged. Thank you. It's not a lot, but it helps. Um, so when that happened, uh, Lincoln pulls a little flute out of his bag and he plays just a couple little notes and you see like blue glowing light come out and she goes, hey, and goes around all three of you and you gain <laughs> seven life. <laughs> Great. Great. I'll look at the uh, the two other ones that get hurt. You guys, you guys still need a little more, or what's going on here? I mean, I'm all right. It'll be okay. I'm like, no, no, no. I insist, and I'll go over and I'll <laughs> grab your hand. And I'm using lay on hands, but I do have guts all over my body. I just wanted to get it on <laughs> hands. But I will, <laughs> I will heal you. How much do you need to go to full? <laughs> um, it would be another seven. Okay, I'll give you another seven, but you do have yeah. like guts like all the way down your forearm. <laughs> and I'll go grab I'll grab Lincoln by the face and just like stroke the side of his face and be like, ah, oh, yes. And I'll give you however much you need. <laughs> and you've got shit all over your face. You ten I I can give I have enough for that. So you guys are fully healed and got shit all over you. It, are any of you investigate the contents of the guts? Okay. Roll for investigation. Are any of you next to the wheat field right now? Like adjacent to it? Or even kind of no. in its vicinity. Uh, I think I'm. I have my back to it because we're at the edge of the forest. All of us. Right. Nix. That's a uh, dirty nineteen. Okay, you start. Uh, you start rustling through these nasty old guts, and um, you find a few clothing items that look like. Well, it's hard to tell. It's some sort of cloth, but it's. And then you find some um, some meat and some bones, and uh, then no license plate. No license plate, but you do. <laughs> you pull apart these two like blobs of guts, and there's a human skull in there, and it's only partially dissolved, so it still has like skin and stuff on it. Roll a Constitution check. Puke, <laughs> oh, puke, puke. All right, that's my constitution. Um, uh, 13? Um, you kind of dry heave, but you manage to keep it all in. <laughs> 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 and if you, if you, you notice kind of a glimmer, and if you look closely, you'll see that there's a gold tooth. <laughs> um, Nyx? You hear yes. you hear rustling coming from the the hay field. I turn around, look. You see some of these moving up over the tops of the 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 whatever you, the stalks, and they rustling towards you. And then you hear a voice as as they're parting, and he's, this person's bursting through. You hear, "Oh, there you are! I almost forgot to tell you." I've had some gnomes that were farm hands, and they never got hurt, so I think this thing doesn't seem to mind gnomes. Oh, that explains a lot, but <laughs> yeah, it's gone. He, he he's kind of stops as you're saying that and looks down and sees the horrible creature, <laughs> and he says, Whoa, yo, Port Authority, do some mighty quick work. I sort of look at him and say, Towels? <laughs> all right i think that's where we're gonna end our adventure <laughs> so you will each get uh the 400 he promised you and then um he'll give the wounded an extra extra 40 a piece all right we get the all righty so that's 550 total through. <laughs> okay, the gold tooth is worth uh, two gold. Here, buddy, God shot. <laughs> I hold up the gold tooth to everybody and I say, This belongs to music. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. 
Lincoln, you got her. Uh, I think it was Lincoln, Lucas, and uh, uh, not Prudence. What no, the hell? Yeah. Not Lincoln, Lucas, Petunia. 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 Yeah. Cool, cool. The flower. The flower name. All right, get you. Hey. Well, it's uh, late for me, so. Yeah, sorry, man. We ran half an hour late. It's all right. It's all right. Um, I'll uh, I'll see you uh, a couple of you uh, 